During award season, I have one party after another. You know how it is. At each exclusive party, the bouncer makes sure I'm on the guest list before I'm allowed in. It keeps the party private and secure. A Radius server acts like a bouncer. It regulates access to the network by verifying the identity of the users through the login credentials entered. The Radius server checks the passwords entered by the users and grants or denies access. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll demonstrate how to configure RV340 series routers to authenticate LTTP VPN connection user logins with a Radius server on Windows 2019 Server Standard Edition. Today, I'll be using a Windows Network Policy Server, NPS, as my Radius server, alongside Windows Active Directory users and computers. Cisco only supports the configuration on the RV340 series routers and does not support the configuration of the Windows Server 2019 Standard Edition or its many tools. I'll log into my router and navigate to the VPN, then IPsec profiles. Here, I'll create the IPsec profiles for the LTTP VPN server. I'll click plus and enter a name in profile name. For this example, I'm going to call it L to TP. I'll leave the default settings on phase one options to group two, three DES. I'll change authentication to SHA-1 and set the SA lifetime to the 86400. I'll leave the phase two protocol selection to ESP, encryption three DES, and change authentication to SHA-1 and change the SA lifetime to 28800. I'll disable perfect forward secrecy and click apply to save. I now have my L to TP IPsec profile. Next, I'll go to L to TP server and click on. I'm going to leave MTU size at 1,400 and set an IP range for the devices that are connecting. This is just a range of IP addresses in the same subnet. For this example, I'll set the start IP address to 10.0.0.1 and my end IP address to 10.0.0.1. Next, I'll add out local DNS server in the DNS1 IP address. You can also add a secondary if you have one. For now, I'm going to leave my user authentication blank. I'll add that later. Check on for the IPsec profile and change the IPsec profile to L to TP. Next, I'll add my pre-shared key, Cisco123 and click Enable to show pre-shared key, and then click Apply. I'll navigate to System Configuration and User Groups. Here, I'll add a new user group for my L to TP VPN connection. Click on the plus button and enter VPN users for the user group. I'll scroll down to verify that L to TP is permitted and click Apply. My VPN users group is here and L to TP is enabled. Now let's talk about how the router is gonna interact with the NPS server on Windows. I see the VPN users group that I created. I'll enter a name for global and security. Under users, I have one user and it's a member of the VPN users group. Next, select allow access in the dial-in tab. Now I'll go over to my network policy server. Make sure that I have registered my network policy server with my Active Directory so that it knows to authenticate using the users from Active Directory. In Radius clients, I'll need to add a client. I'll name it RV340, give it an IP address, enable it, and then set a pre-shared key. In this case, I've used a manual pre-shared key. This will have to match, so I recommend copying this pre-shared key and pasting it into the router side. Next, under Network Policies, I'll create a policy for l to tp to authenticate with and name it Allow RV340 l to tp for granting access. The type of network access server can be unspecified. Under Conditions, I'll select the Windows groups and an NAS IPv4 address, which is the router's IP address. In my constraints, I'm gonna set up my authentication methods. In this case, I have MSCHAP version 2, MSCHAP and CHAP enabled. Under Settings, I'll need to add a class and specify the VPN user group that was created on the router. In this case, I created VPN users. 
Now I'm back on my router side and I'm going to configure the router to use the NPS server from Windows with Radius. I'll select Radius under User Accounts and click Edit. First, I'll enter the IP address of the Radius server, which is 172.19.76.2. And I'm using port 1645. This is where I enter my pre-shared key. Again, I recommend copying and pasting the pre-shared key to make sure this is correct. It needs to be a very difficult pass key, which can be auto-generated from the Windows server. Sometimes the RV340 will not accept a pre-generated key because it doesn't accept certain characters. You may have to modify it if it's generated from the Windows server. I'll go ahead and click Apply to save the changes. My Radius server is enabled and is pointing to the server IP address. Now I need to make sure that l to tp server is using Radius for its primary. Now that I've completed all that, I'll click Apply to save the changes. Next, I'll click on the flashing red disk icon to save the changes on the router. This redirects to the configuration management under administration. Next, for my sources, I'll select running configuration and for destination, select startup configuration. Then I'll click apply. This is successful. I'll see the flashing red disk has disappeared, telling me that there are no current settings changes in my running configuration that don't match my startup configuration. Now, in internet and network settings, I'll select the VPN option to create my VPN client on the Windows client. I'll click Add and select Windows VPN. I'll enter a name for the connection. I'm going to use LTTP to Office. My server name is the WAN IP address of my router. In most cases, it's going to be a public IP address. You could also use a dynamic DNS. Here, I'll use my dynamic DNS and enter in my domain name. I'm going to select my VPN type, which is l tp over IPsec with pre-shared key. I'll enter the same pre-shared that I entered on the router, which was Cisco123. I do recommend that once you've tested this is working, change the pre-shared key to something very difficult. Even do an auto-generator if possible, so that nobody can guess it. I'm going to use a type of sign-in info, username and password. You can select to remember type of sign-in info or do it every time you try to connect. In this case, I'll enter the username for my Active Directory server and click the password. I'll click Save and see that my connection name is here. Now I'll attempt to connect to my VPN that I've just created. I'll right-click Internet Options and select LTTP to Office Connection and click Connect. It's now requesting that we enter my login credentials, and now I'm connected. At this point, I should be able to bring up my router. I see that I'm connected here. Under VPN, VPN status, I can scroll down to my l tp connection and see that user Brazu from remote IP using tunnel IP is connected. At any given time, if I see something I don't like, I can click this action disconnect and it will break the connection. You can see I've been disconnected now. So if I refresh this page, I will not be able to reach the router. I've opened Wireshark a tool I use to verify that my connection is active or to troubleshoot a connection that's inactive during authentication. Here, I have the request from the router to the server. I can scroll up or down to see the data that is being sent to the server to verify. My next Radius packet is the Access Accept. A Radius server is accepting the credentials and allowing the LTTP connection to occur. Another tool I can use is the Windows Event Viewer. I have it opened here to the Windows Logs and Security option. I've chosen the log here. You can see that it was created when I authenticated earlier to my l tp connection. I can see that Brazu user was the username. As I scroll down, I can see the public IP that it came from. I see the NAS identifier that I entered in the policy. I also see the friendly name and the IP address of the router that was created for the Radius client on the MPS server. I can see that it did hit my network policy. That's one thing you want to check if it's not working. And down here, the log results would give you any indication as to why the client did not authenticate. In this case, it's just writing to the local log file that it occurred. 
awesome. My network is now private and secure. Just like my party tonight, exclusive access is limited to those on the guest list. I better run. It's time for my glam squad to get started before my next party tonight. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.